Howdy, everybody. Welcome back. I haven't posted anything for like two weeks, so uh, this is going to be the big uploading event, Ben. Oh, cool. Well, uh, thanks for having me. How have you been lately? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I mean, skate-wise, I've got this Achilles tendonitis that's kind of grieving me, but it's because I haven't been skating much over the last couple of weeks, it's getting better. I'm, I'm putting this one in, not because it's like a super compelling question, because but because it's a really common one, which is... <laughs> Uh, how do you stay motivated in skating? I haven't been skating all summer. All, all I can do is kind of tell you like my experience of floating in and out of skating. Basically as a teen, I was absolutely obsessed with skating. It's all I wanted to do, especially like young, you know, from like 11 to 14, 15, mm -hmm. 15 till, um, till about 19 drugs hit really hard. And so skating definitely not intentionally took a backseat, but it just did. You know, as long as I was using drugs for my priority, absolutely. You start doing cavemans um, and bonelesses and bird slides and shit, or you were just not no, skating at all? No, never. No, I just wasn't skating. <laughs> not even drugs right? could turn me to that. <laughs> yeah, drugs definitely took away my focus for a long time. Um, and then when I got clean and sober at 22, it was like, okay, well, skating went so far. Because we're talking about uh, 2003 is when I got clean and sober. Skating went so far, you know, in terms of progression right. from the time that I started until there. And it was like, oh, well, you know, for the longest time, I wanted to go pro and do all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. But by 22, I could already see, you know, like guys like Paul Rodriguez, Chris Cole, you know, you look at their video parts from that era, like, yeah, right. And whatever zero videos it was. And I mean, it's like I wasn't anywhere close. So at that point, I realized, all right, I'm never going to make it as a pro skater. That was my first time kind of losing interest. I still skated regularly. Like I would skate, you know, on the weekends, two days a week, but I worked a regular job. Eventually I got into the trades and then that actually became my interest. I became super interested in building stuff for a while. And so the reason I say that is it's really, it's actually really typical. It's very common for people to devote themselves wholeheartedly to skateboarding in their teen years. Mm -hmm. and then as they come into their 20s and it's like okay well what you know i kind of got to figure out what i'm really going to do with myself and um it's common for skating to take a back seat at that point i never like stopped skating but there was times where i wouldn't skate for a month or two um <laughs> that house phone? yeah that's a phone <laughs> it's gonna go for a bit I gotta like just unplug that thing. It happens every time. Give me I a second. I can't believe you're paying for it to do that to you. Whoa, nice chair. I gotta upgrade. All I'm saying is, is it's really typical, and it doesn't have to be exactly in your early 20s, but it, it's very common for people to lose interest and passion for skating, mm -hmm. um, be, especially after devoting so much time and attention to it after working, you know, in the trades for like 15 years and grinding it out and the stress and pressure of being a contractor and a dad, eventually I was like, my God, I miss skateboarding. And I, and I started to kind of, you know, I had a little stockpile of boards I would buy cause I was making more money than skating. Right. And I started skating them and started getting the idea to create a YouTube channel. And then that really like kind of sparked my interest again. I would say as far as staying motivated goes, like it's it's okay and it's it's normal to like be disenchanted with your hobby for like sometimes months at a time. Like when mm -hmm. I was younger, I had multiple things that I was into. Like I, I was I was pretty good at soccer. I was doing that on and off. And sometimes I just didn't want to do anything. So I and I wasn't even skateboarding, but every time I went back to it, I was like, Oh wow, this is this is fun. So it can it's okay to not skateboard and it's okay to take breaks um but if you do really want to keep skateboarding try some different stuff because i think it can happen a lot that you go to the skate park you do the same tricks on the same kind of obstacles you take the same paths you do the same lines and you wonder sort of why you're not feeling any kind of excitement sometimes i just try to do back tails because i'm terrified of them and I know that like that's a that's a good way for me to like challenge myself. You may very well surprise yourself um, with what you're capable of. I've often had that feeling like if you're getting bored from skating, you're not trying enough because there is limitless possibilities. I mean, you know, there's only so much each one and every one of us necessarily is capable of. But right. like, yeah, there's still I mean, curbs kind of exploded for me this year. Right. And it's not like I want to spend all my time 
filming slappies on curbs, but like I, I learned how to slap you properly and I've never yeah. been able to do that. It's a genre of skateboarding that if you haven't tried and you haven't really committed any time to, like I thought I just couldn't slap you straight up for the longest time until I really like looked at the thing and tried to figure it out and spent time on it. Like that's the other part of skateboarding is there's so many like disciplines and, and, and different <clears throat> ways of doing it that if you get in the habit of only doing one certain kind then you're not going to really know like what your capability is in other areas because you make I do a bunch of manuals I'm just not really like a ledge guy it's like well you might not be as great of a ledge guy as you are a manual guy but if you do if all you're doing when you go to the skate park is manuals you're not going to know how good at ledge skating you got you know all the dudes that got good at ledge skating aren't just natural born ledge skaters they stuck to that and and they figured out how to get good at it so Try out some some different stuff, you know. Try to fifty fifty a flat bar. Don't like pigeonhole yourself uh, as a skateboarder. Like experiment with a uh, with some some different types of obstacles. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because something I didn't mention because I hadn't thought of it was I got majorly into transition skating mm. at 22, and you know up till because like my generation starting in '93. There was like a few ramps left over from all the older dudes that, you know, grew up skating ramps and loved that stuff. But yeah. for the most part, they were all kind of falling apart. Mm -hmm. So I got a little bit of ramp skating in the early 90s. I got I got a job at a skate park for a couple months right when I got clean. And so I was just there and the ramp was there and I got to skate it every single day and I got the bug, you know, yeah. and I learned so many tricks. Like basically all I could really do was, you know, like rock and roll couldn't even axle stall properly, yep. you know, tail stall 180s, like all the like super basic little tricks, right? I went from like being a, a pretty competent, you know, tech skater, right? And like yeah. basic park skater to all of a sudden spending all day, every day, just like learning transition. Yeah. And I didn't care. I didn't care that I wasn't doing the hardest tricks or that I'm not like a yeah, blunt to put your ego guy. aside for a little bit. Yeah, I just loved doing it so much and learning this whole new skill set because transition is its own skill set. Yeah. So learning that one, that is what I spent probably about five years doing. And so exactly what you said, right? Find something new. It's kind of like food when people are like, oh, I just, it, I don't like pickles. Like I'm just not a pickle guy or whatever. It's like, well, when was the last time that you had a pickle? And it's like, well, when I was like, you know, five. Hey. You're just mad because I'll be able to do something with my fucking guitar and hands that you'll never be able to achieve in your entire life, kid. So yeah, you're gay. I, I said I was doing an advice segment with you and, and some people interpreted that as uh, them giving their own advice, um, which I thought <laughs> was, was kind of funny. Paul Kim says, here's my advice to people who are just beginning to skate. Learn to ride the fucking skateboard before you try learning flip tricks in all caps. Um, so many kids these days completely skip the part where you have to become comfortable on the board before advancing into new tricks. Learn how to ride fast and ollie fast. Damn. No offense to girl skaters who start skating in their early 20s and shit, but come on. I've seen your wobbly ass stationary ollie. Don't ask me kickflip tips if you can barely ride down the sidewalk. I say this kind of shit to people all the time. Like kids will ask like, you know, how do I make it flip? And meanwhile, they're like literally standing with their feet like parallel to each other on the skateboard. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're not, you're, you're not ready. I mean, some people talk about when you should even go to the skate park. Like when is it even worth your time to actually show up and, and put yourself in an environment with, with different slopes and, and, you know, ramps and banks and stuff. Um, when you're ready to be constantly microaggressed by everyone at the park, right? When whenever you think you're 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 ready for that. This this is again somebody who's spending a little too much time focusing on what everybody else is or isn't doing and should and shouldn't be doing. How much does it hurt you to be like, put your foot here, pop, flick, there you go, and then move on? Don't invest your time and energy into whether or not they can or can't do it or whether or not they should. Just you know, give them the time of day and move on. Anti-hater mindset from from ben okay um as someone around your age i think talking about me how can i pursue a career in skateboarding or at least something related to skateboarding kind of like how you started your youtube channel or if i'm not gaining a following at this age as a skateboarder not a content creator is it too late for me to find a sponsorship 
and at least find the smallest ounce of support from a company. I feel like the thing I love most is turning into a popular kid's high school situation where I want to be accepted in the community so bad and I keep getting rejected. But in all honesty, it's just me rejecting myself and convincing myself that I'm not a talented skateboarder at all. Um, this is from Cameron. He needs I'd have to, to see his clips to to have some reference here. He needs, I, I I mean, clips aside, you're should we struggling. assume he's talented? I, I honestly, I don't really think that it that it matters too much mm -hmm. because I think this is an like another case of being realistic about what skateboarding is to you like and and mm -hmm. what your expectation is from it i would say that the people who have become professional skateboarders who just you know are really good naturally talented and things work out for them they're lucky um outs unless you're like jagger eaton and you've got a skate dad and he sends you to like the warehouse every day to train indoors and you, you know, you're going to become an olympian or whatever there's really not much of like a program or any like particular guide on how to become a professional skateboarder. If it happens for you, um, then it happens. But I wouldn't let the dream of turning pro interfere with you know the practice of skateboarding and mm -hmm. the enjoyment of it. Because if you're not enjoying skateboarding and you're getting frustrated with the state of affairs, like you say, it's like a a, a popular kids in high school situation. Of course it is. You know that's that's what skate. If you want to be pro, you got to understand it's all about, you know, your marketability. So how popular or how cool you look or whatever, that's companies gauging, you know, if you're going to be able to sell their product. I mean, even if you are doing the hardest tricks ever, if you're just not marketable, if you just don't look cool or whatever, I'm not saying that's you, but that's just the nature of you know, the nature of the thing. The most technical skateboarders aren't always the ones who are getting, you know, the best contracts. Like there's guys in the hockey video, um, like John Fitzgerald, who didn't do a single kickflip or flip his board a single time, but he looks kind of cool. So he's pro. Sk just skate for fun. Don't let it ruin the, what I would assume is, is, you know, the, your favorite thing about your life. Don't, don't let it get in the way of that. I think skateboarding has always been who, you know, it's like it's it definitely you know one part talent uh like five parts who you know and let's let's break this into 10 <laughs> one part talent five parts who you know uh four parts work ethic because that's another thing people come in burn bright and fizzle out hard yeah i i'm actually i think i enjoy skateboarding more because i never went pro because i never I hate actually to be pro honestly i, I think it, it would I, be miserable the times that I've taken my YouTube channel, the skate one, the most seriously and have felt the most pressure to be putting out content is the times that I have liked it the least. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I was happier doing like trolling my subs with three shorts videos. That was, those were great I, videos, by the way. I enjoyed those thoroughly. Some of my best, some of, in my opinion, my most entertaining or best videos are often the ones that do the worst. You took the pressure off of yourself, you know, for those ones a little bit. Yep. That's what it seemed like yep. where you, you experimented, had a little bit more fun and you're like, we're just talking shorts. So, you know, who gives yeah. a shit? Did we even answer his question? Um, I don't, dude, it is a popularity contest. That's, that's mm -hmm. the answer. And like, you know, be, be content with it. A lot of, I, a lot of people skateboard and like, I think that they justify it to themselves, like they're skateboarding, um, because I guess they're not content with it just being okay that it's a hobby by being like, I'm going to turn pro. I'm going to make this into my career. A lot of people message me and like the people that don't like me and stuff, they say like, you're just doing your YouTube channel or whatever so that you can be pro. And this is how you're breaking into the industry, which I view as like mm. a massive projection on their part, which is like, you know, I don't know why you're getting attention. Like I'm like better than you and this is what I want. So if I were in your position, this is what I would do. I have no intention of, of turning pro or ever giving myself a board or anything like that. That's never how I viewed myself in in skateboarding i've never viewed myself as a professional nor would i want to because i don't i wouldn't want skateboarding the act of riding a skateboard and having to jump down stuff and risk hurting myself um and push myself physically i'm not even built for that shit and i know i'm not i know i'm mm. not that guy so i've never been what i've wanted to do i think yeah that happened to me i had the like i said the you know five broken arms in six months and after yeah. that i was like do I really want to do that? Like, I'm not jumping down shit. 
I hate being injured. I fucking, I really, really despise it. And that's part of being pro. And yep. some people are just built, built tough and can eat shit and it doesn't affect them. You know, you see Alex Midler, he like eats shit every time he gets a street trick. He gets that up gay, and he, he does that it guy again. from Zero. Which one? <laughs> the, uh, yeah, no, the the guy that looks like he shouldn't be doing the stuff he does. Oh. Gabrielle something. Is it Gabrielle Summers? Summers? Some of the stuff that guy does, and like, have you watched the um, the uh, hall? I don't know what is it. Not even Hall of Me. It's the My War things and stuff mm -hmm. with him. Oh my god! What do you do when? You know that the friends and people you surround you, yourself with are not good influences, but you always fall back to them. Pain is a great negotiator. When the consequences of hanging out with those people become painful enough, you'll stop being there. It just depends what your threshold is. I had a pretty solid friend group growing up, but there was one kid who kept wanting to do stupid shit, and I'd, ha I'd keep hanging out with him, and then I, would, I just got fed up, you know? Um, you will probably, unless you are just a bad kid, which you might be, um, it's possible. But if you're already having this sort of like moral question, then you're probably not, but you know what to do. It's okay. Like part of the, the, the reason I think you keep probably going back to your friend is because you don't know who else to hang out with. And uh, maybe you, you know, you don't have a lot of other friends, which I'd say it's like, it's okay to, you know, hang out by yourself. And if your friend is like giving you shit for, for not hanging out uh, and stuff, just like, just tell the truth. Be like, I haven't been into what we've been doing lately. And say that because sometimes people really do need to hear that. And it's entirely possible that your friend may not be like super stoked either, but just doesn't know what to do or needs to hear that what you guys have been up to lately, like, um, isn't the best use of either of your time. So Tell the truth, and uh, I would say avoid him for a while if if you need to, um, because maybe that would be what's best for both of you. That's way better advice than I gave. I can tell you read the questions yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I thought about that one already. Well, just to be transparent, oh, oh. I did give you the option of, of going and blind. You did give me the option, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's because I was expecting some of them to be really funny, but well, so far these are just, I, these are just of, like... A lot of people really had like sincere, sincere Real questions. questions. Yeah, some of the shit posty ones really weren't that funny. Like, like oh, best haircut for skateboarding. Whatever Uto <laughs> has on his head, that's probably the best one. Okay, you want it? You want a funny one? Hey man, heard you're giving advice out. What should I do if my homie is progressively Desenzo pilled? We used to have interesting conversations, but now he just talks about sets he wants to front one. Let me know what you think. I, I don't even think that's a real one. No, it's definitely not a, a real question. That's totally manufactured. You can't stop. If if Let's tr pretend this is real. If your okay. friend just has a passion for frontside 180-ing stair sets... Then let him let him be. Sometimes, like the most beautiful skateboarders are the ones that are just you know true to themselves, and, and they don't worry about what everybody else is doing, and they they follow they follow their passions. You know, the rest of us can yeah. only be jealous that that somebody is fulfilled by simply doing frontside one eighties. I wish that I was mean, me. <laughs> Rainbow Swag Lord comes to mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let like, him front one. Yeah, let let the man front one. Don't try to get in his way. Okay, do you have any tricks that no matter how long you've tried, you just can't seem to wrap your head around them? Uh, front side crooked grinds. I oh. make slow and steady progress on. I, yeah. I did a tutorial on those. I know, I haven't watched it, but I, I did watch a bit of your crosslock one and I saw that you had done that. So I was going to watch it. Like, honestly, I have kind of, I can now accomplish them. And I usually yeah. land it within the first three tries, but then then I won't get the next 10. It's scary. My theory with the the front crook, it takes some skill obviously, but it's it's very much about your your confidence. Um, similarly to kind of how, how back tails are because when you hop into a front crook, if you miss it, 
and because you're you're grinding like front side but really when you're in the crooked your your back is to it if mm -hmm. you miss it you're going to fall backwards and you're you're going to fall onto the ledge um well, the and, worst and that's the scary. worst fail is the rollover yeah right if yes. you get your wheels up that's the worst one that really takes people out yeah and i think um, the that that fear though of knowing that you can eat it will interfere with your ability to actually get into the front crook and, and to trust yourself because that's one of those tricks where when I first get to the skate park There's no way in hell that like that's a warm-up trick for me when I do mm. tricks like front crook and back tail Those are tricks that I really only do when I'm like, okay, this I'm I'm focused on this This is what I'm doing now and I have to build my confidence to it and then I can like do them relatively consistently when that's my main focus, but um, that's a, that's a trick where you're going to have to figure out like the, the mental block, you know, and that's how the way I did it is I, I put my box into the grass so that I could get the crook without the consequence of, of eating mm -hmm. shit, you know? Yeah. For me, it's just, it was like 20 years of bad habits. Like I would try that trick once every year mm -hmm. and I would, I was all, it, it had a lot to do with what you said is I was scared to get up on top of the ledge. Right. So I would like try and. And, and so I gave myself this muscle memory of doing the trick wrong. Right. And it took me six months to, um, maybe it was like four to six months to actually start to be able to land them and to get to the point where I could land like five in a session. Uh, there might be 50 tries, but there would be five lands. Yeah, it is. It and, really is one of those tricks where if you don't do it right, you're, you, you can't half front crook. It doesn't exist. You have to get in no. there. You got to pinch it. Because even if you do like the tap version in the center of the truck, it's not really a front crook. Like you might impress some random, but you know that's not the trick. In the 96. real six. Yeah, the the real trick is is the pinch. We've all seen it done correctly, and it's gonna feel a lot better if you do it. If you go one foot in and one foot out halfway fucking with me, do me a favor. Jump all the way out. You gotta try it's one of the to best do it. feeling tricks because of the fear factor too it's because like yeah. i it's a mental victory as well like i overcame this yeah so i have an answer though to uh i have an answer to how to learn a trick mm -hmm. um try 10 every session every single session if you are at a spot with an applicable obstacle whatever trick it is and you can work up the nerve try 10 and if you're not feeling it that day stop and if you are feeling it and you're willing to get locked into a battle, maybe you'll try 50, mm. you know, but like, instead of like spending an hour trying to learn a trick, which is a waste of time and energy, <laughs> spend, spend five to 10 minutes every day. And you will, because it's also how our brains work, how they learn. You don't learn something in the space of an hour by trying it 500 times. That's not how our brains work. Your brain, like try it 10, 20 times then sleep on it and your subconscious starts working on it. Mm -hmm. And it's that consistent, steady trying every single session. So front crooks is one of the tricks. Like, while I say, yeah, I don't have them dialed yet. I now land them. And it used to be an unlandable trick for me. Mm -hmm. So I learned front crooks that way. And there was another trick I learned recently doing the same. I got way better at switch trays. Every single session, I would try a minimum of 10. But I didn't, you know, I didn't go into like hundreds of tries and like stressing myself out. So it was just that like whenever I'm working on a new trick that I or something that has evaded me for a long time, I do the that's my little uh, I hate to use the word hack because I hate the whole like trick hacks on YouTube thing. But like that's that's my hack for like how I try and wire a trick into my brain is yeah. by trying 10 every session. For, for scary grind tricks too, something that I do um, and this might sound terrifying is that I start by like just getting into the trick, like literally a stall, like a front crook. I start by like mm -hmm. getting the pinch, knowing that, and then I sort of like s do it, just kissing the end of it, going really slowly, and then hopefully by the time if I if things go according to plan, that by the time I'm done with the trick, then I'll be doing it on the whole ledge. Um, that's just mm -hmm. that's just how I work, and that's how I. I warm myself up because a lot of these tricks, I'm good enough to do them. I'm just afraid. So I have to like sort of convince my my mind that um, 
that uh, that I can actually do them. Sometimes the the possibility of eating shit and trying to avoid it is what's going to make you eat shit in the first place. So, the hesitation mid mid pop. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so this one's not about skateboarding. My question is a little bit more personal, so if you don't want to include it, that's fine. With that said, uh, uh, a little background. My girlfriend and I are breaking up in four days. <laughs> Bro, please, bro. Why you do? Uh, uh. Uh, she's older than me and is going off to college in Washington while I stay home in Glendora. Bruh. My question to you is, how do I not completely lose my mind? How do you get over the over things like these? I guess I've been dealing with it for a while now since I've been cognizant of the age difference and and the college thing for a while, but it's just starting to hit me now. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'm kind of just going through it. I have no advice. Time. Time will make it pass. This, I had the same exact thing happen to me. Uh, she was going to college and I wasn't. <laughs> same exact thing. But yeah, we, we ended up breaking up too. I mean, this happens to everybody. Like, you are not the first person that has a high school girlfriend or boyfriend and you guys break up because that's the natural trajectory of your lives. From my perspective, thinking back on it now, like, you know, we had a, a, a nice relationship in high school, and it's like, if it's your first serious relationship, then it can feel like the end of the fucking world. Um, but, you know, almost 10 years later, looking back now, seeing the person that she is now and the person that I am now, we would not be dating if we met today. So know that, like, you're a completely different person right now than, than you will be. Um, so it, it might feel like the, the end of the world, and you're probably going to be pretty bummed for a while. But more than likely, it's, it really is for the best. Not that I'm into any, like, uh, Buddhism shit or anything like that, but r things, really do, things really do happen for a reason. Um, just make sure you, like, you don't let your, your sorrow and your wallowing take over because that's what's really gonna fuck you over is if you feel bad for yourself and you let the negative emotions like dictate your life keep hanging out with your friends keep skateboarding keep participating in the hobbies that you like doing even if it feels like shit sometimes that's going to be a lot better for you and who knows you'll probably meet somebody else uh as long as you don't sit at home and and weep uh while the shower runs you know so keep your head up dude <laughs> Brother, don't get addicted to women. Women addiction is more toxic than all addictions. <laughs> oh, here's here's a quick one. Is Allen Hardware superior to Phillips? No. I, I didn't think I never I never thought so either. There's like some Allen truthers out there, I guess because they don't strip. As they do strip but here's the thing people who are incompetent with phillips are more likely to strip phillips than allen but they both strip and yeah, when allen yeah. strips it's even worse right because you're left with a circle <laughs> i would always go for phillips personally just like because it is vastly more convenient i actually like the look of uh allen key better really it's it, it's a headache to try and get all the phillips lined up the same way not that I ever do, but would it be weird if you had all of them completely lined up right? If you, uh, if horizontal you're, and if vertical. If you're getting to that point with your skateboarding setup, you definitely need, you some, need help. You need some counseling because there's no way that yeah. that is not permeating other aspects of your existence. Or you have no control over anything else in your life, and so you try and exercise <laughs> yeah, exactly. it in that one area. <laughs> Okay, well, just this one, our last one here. What do you think of skaters of any age wearing helmets at the skate park? Let them. If yeah. somebody wants to wear a helmet, let them, and don't give them a hard time for it. Like, it's their head. It's not yours. I think most of this, like, depends on your age, and if you're if you're a kid and you're looking around at the skate park and you see everybody isn't wearing helmets and, like, your mom is telling you to wear a helmet but you want to fit in because, you know, kids always just want to fit in, then you're going to feel weird about it and maybe you're asking mm -hmm. this because you want to wear a helmet and you don't want to be judged for it i think the reality of it is most people are not going to give a fuck about um the fact that you're you're wearing a helmet like maybe your friends 
might might give you some shit or whatever but like you said it's it's your head and you 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 should know yourself too if you're the type of person who eats shit a lot and and doesn't have like a ton of control over their body and anything can happen to anybody but if you're like sort of predisposed to that kind of situation where you might you know eat it then definitely yeah put put a fucking helmet on your head um unless you're going pro or something and you need to look sick while you grind a a 35 stare i kind of hope it gets to a point where that's actually okay because like my god when i watch people trying that stuff i'm just like i'd hate to be their parents man yeah be careful and don't worry about like what some kid in in nikes and and big boys might might think about you wearing a helmet because his brain has only developed so far as to where you know <laughs> no offense to you of course ben in, in your dunks and your big boy shorts you can't handle me handle. Mm. hold up ain't you nathaniel b what is what? Get the fuck out of the floor! did anyone ask about getting jobs in skateboarding yes that's something that i actually think is worth talking about oh then let's oh believe me plenty of people ask i read a couple that were like i don't think i'm good enough to be pro like how but i do love skateboarding and i want a job in skateboarding like how do i make that happen yeah i'd love to talk about um what a lot of the jobs in skateboarding look like even though i've never had one i know a lot of people in skateboarding the first thing i would say all the jobs in the periphery of skateboarding um you know that support the skateboard industry but are not directly related to riding a skateboard Mm. i.e everything that's not a pro skateboarder expect your gut to grow faster than your bank account (laughs) Most jobs in skateboarding, like, okay, let's start at the bottom. Yeah. So distributor jobs, warehouses, Mm -hmm. all right? It's a warehouse job. Or if you're lucky enough to get into the office, it's a sales job. So you're either going to be on the floor packing boxes or you're going to be sitting at a computer um, sending emails and trying to drive sales for the companies you represent. So if you're interested in that, great. But just know that, like, aside from the fact that it's skateboarding, that's what it is. They're desk jobs and they're in sales. And I want to like do a quick disclaimer here because like, I know a lot of people in distributors and if any of them saw this and thought I was totally hating on them, I'd be, I'd be bummed because I really like these guys. The other thing I've noticed is that like a lot of the people who have jobs in skateboarding don't skate anymore because it's not a lifestyle that's necessarily conducive to actually riding your skateboard. One, you're surrounded and saturated by it all the time. And two, you're doing a job that is not physically active that um, makes you more predisposed to injury or even not even wanting to skateboard in the first place. So if you want to ride your skateboard or make a decent living, a lot of jobs in skateboarding should be off the table. I like the the point about saturation um, coming from somebody whose life is like 100% saturated with with skateboarding pretty much. Um, I enjoy the things in my life that don't have anything to do with skateboarding. So I think it's natural if you have a hobby that you really like that you are in love with to be like, I'd like to figure out how to do this, you know, for a living or do something around this for a living. But be aware of like the fact that if it's if your hobby becomes like your job too and all of a sudden like 75 percent of your time is dedicated to this like the thing that you did as a hobby to like escape your job and and the stress of that is now connected to it and and you know those are like sort of one of the same thing now it could negatively affect your like your 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 passion and your enjoyment of skateboarding some people it doesn't some people work in skateboarding and they love it and they're total fanatics and they can't get enough of it just because it's skateboarding it doesn't magically make it not a job necessarily so um, or even make you connected to skateboarding Right. Gonna be connected to packing skateboards into boxes. <laughs> there is something to be said, though, about like, because I used to work in a skate shop and mm-hmm. I would have preferred to work in that skate shop versus to like work at PacSun or, or something because I liked being around the skateboards. I liked being around the shoes and I like talking to people about the stuff. Um, Time and place, too, though. What was your age range working at the skate oh. shop? like 22 to 24 yeah that's a that's like a totally that's a decent age to be doing that what you need to be careful of is not to wind up in a like choosing 
a rewarding job in skateboarding if you can find one versus winding up in one of the menial jobs in skateboarding. Yeah. And I think more people wind up in menial jobs in skateboarding than wind up with meaningful jobs in skateboarding. Yeah, I think so, the, the meaningful jobs in skateboarding are vastly <laughs> outnumbered by the menial jobs. So I don't know. That's that's my that's my little that's some more dadly advice. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's good advice because a lot of people do ask about that and they wanna they wanna do skateboarding, you know, whether it's YouTube or in the industry itself mm -hmm. i'm a big proponent of of skateboarders doing uh trade jobs like we're mm -hmm. we're we're naturally physical people we like to be doing things and i have found that not all but like a lot of skateboarders do actually have good work ethic good attention to detail and good drive mm -hmm. and so when you learn to apply that in other areas in your life you can you can do well i think being a tradesman you know being a, a worker a builder very honorable jobs very useful coming from somebody who sits in a chair for money like i don't think that what <laughs> i am doing is even remotely as helpful to general society as you know what an actual builder or or a laborer does if you get into unions and shit like you can you can make a lot of money and you can you can work your way up you can make good money and you can do it without student debt yeah that's a really good point all right I think uh, I think we'll we'll stop it there. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming on, Ben. My pleasure. We'll see you next video. Bye. Bye. Today I'm making a drawing of Ben Shapiro, in the style of Lisa Frank. First, I trace his little face and open it up in Photoshop. Lots of saturation, a little bit of blur. Hot out the oven. Next, I use a purple marker to draw little cheetah spots on his little face. Make sure to use little spots and big spots. For the background, use every color and make sure to keep it pretty. Um, no muddy colors. Next, just a couple butterfly stickers to seal the deal. Sign the back with some gold letters. Laminate it. Hot off the press. That's it. Thanks, Ben.